Hi, I'm Spencer. I cook, I create recipes, and I really love Thanksgiving. It's probably one of my favorite holidays. I just love how food brings people together and just I have just such great memories of having Thanksgiving food as a kid, all being around a table with like amazing food. It's it's just fantastic. And today we're going to be making a cranberry orange relish and then talking about what I make for Thanksgiving each year. We are here at Chez Panisse cooking in the kitchen on the salad station. Uh, Chez Panisse is a restaurant located in Berkeley, California. It was started by a woman named Alice Waters back in 1971. And Alice really cared about how things tasted. Uh, and she sought out farmers and asked them to grow these specific varieties of vegetables grown for their taste, not grown for how big they are or how they transport around. But that's just really, she pioneered the farm to table movement and that's what it is. Just partnering with local farms um, and just getting really connected to where your food comes from. She also really cares about just how the earth is treated and how we treat it. And so we only use organic produce here and our food comes from organic and regenerative farms that really take care of the earth. And uh, we just value those things and we wanna be good stewards of the earth and, and take care of it in a great way. I'm just really thankful to be part of the team cooking here and also just love to be making the recipes that that are here in these videos. This cranberry relish, I feel, is just such an important part of the Thanksgiving meal. I love Thanksgiving food, but it tends to be on the richer side, the fattier side, the very carby side. And so what cranberry jelly or cranberry sauce does for the meal is it brightens everything up. It gives a little pop of acidity and sweetness and brightness, and it just makes the whole plate just come alive with flavor, and it's just so delicious. Um, this recipe, I don't know where it came from, to be honest. Um, I've been making it for probably over 15 years and I've kind of slowly adapted it over the years. So this is kind of my version of it. Um, it's really simple. It's really easy. It's going to come together in about 30 seconds. So I'm going to tell you guys what's in it and we're going to make it together. So first of all, we have cranberries. We have a 12 ounce bag of cranberries that are, are washed and all ready to go. We have a whole orange here. Lemon, we're gonna use the juice. This is three fourths cups of sugar, 150 grams of sugar and a pinch of salt. We're going to cut the orange and just make sure there are no seeds in it. We're gonna throw everything in the blender, pulse it together. It's easy as that and we're done. So the first thing you wanna do, it's really all the only thing you do, is we're gonna take the whole orange and you're just gonna cut it in big chunks. There's no seeds in this orange, so we're totally fine, but we're putting it all in there, the pith, and the fruit all together. It's nice, this sauce is really great because it has the bitter bitterness from the cranberries and the bitterness from the pith, the sweetness and acidity from the orange. We're gonna put a little salt for seasoning, um, the sugar for sweetness, and a little lemon juice. The lemon juice is for tartness and acidity. And we're just gonna pulse this together until it comes to a kind of a cohesive sauce. So just do one second long pulses. I'm gonna give it a little stir. It's really great. It is tart and sweet and citrusy, a little bitter. It's really, really flavorful. And then that's really it. You can make this a couple days ahead. And besides being great on turkey, it's it kind of functions like kind of a fresh jam. So I love putting it on buttered toast. I think that's really delicious. Um, I love putting it, my sister puts it on yogurt in the mornings and that's really great. Um, you can put it, I made a galette, like a tart and, and then spread a thin layer and then put apples on it and baked it. That was really great, but 
That's the recipe. It's so simple. It takes like 30 seconds to put together. All comes together in the food processor. I think it's a great thing to have at the Thanksgiving table. It's bright and acidic and it allows the, the other things on the plate to just really pop. It's really delicious. I hope you guys make it. So that is our cranberry orange relish. So now I kind of want to talk generally about Thanksgiving and what it looks like in my family and what I'm going to make this year. Growing up, Thanksgiving was always with my dad's side of the family and we'd always get together and we'd make a lot of food, have a lot of great you know, family times and things have changed and our, ta our Thanksgiving table has gotten a lot bigger. So um, if you know me, I keep a lot of notes and old menus and things like that. So each year I kind of make notes on the previous year of like, oh, what I should change and what I need to do different. And so this is kind of a culmination of like all my notes and past menus. And I'm just gonna go over like the bigger things. Um, that I've done in the past. And let's start with the turkey. My suggestion for the turkey is to buy it ahead of time. Buy your turkey a week ahead. Sometimes it takes a few days for the turkey to defrost. Sometimes they're partially frozen. Um, so buy it ahead, stick it in your fridge, let it defrost slowly. On Monday, you wanna season your turkey. You wanna get it ready for to roast on Thursday on Thanksgiving day. So I'll take it out and what I'll do, take it out of packages and take out the, usually there's a little package in there of giblets and, um, and the neck, so take that out, use that for a broth and the gravy later. And then what I'll do is I'll turn it on the breast side, I'll make two cuts and take out the wishbone in there. It makes carving the bird so much easier. And then I will stuff the cavity with aromatics like garlic, lemon, thyme, sage, uh, maybe half an onion or a carrot or celery. Those things just really add flavor to the bird as it cooks. And then I'll season it. So to season the bird, I generally go for about 0.5% salt or about one teaspoon of diamond crystal kosher salt per pound. So to convert it, you can take the weight of your turkey, multiply it by 0 0.005 uh, and convert that to grams and then you have the grams of salt that you need. So when you salt the bird, sprinkle from a high and just salt the bird all over and on the inside. Then I like to truss or tie up the bird and it just keeps, I like to keep the wings in and the drums together so it cooks pretty evenly. And then I put that in the roasting, uh, roasting pan. I stick that in the fridge, I leave it uncovered. And leaving it uncovered for a couple days will do, will allow the excess water to evaporate. Um, and that'll get your skin nice and crispy. And seasoning it on Monday, a few days before, will allow the salt to permeate really deep inside the bird. On Thursday, on turkey day, roasting day, you wanna take the bird out three to four hours before you're planning to roast it. Uh, crank up your oven to about 500 degrees. We're gonna start really, really hot to get the temperatures um, just kind of up and cooking. We'll set the bird in. As soon as the bird goes in, turn it down to about 425 or so and let it cook for about 45 minutes. You're looking for a golden brown, brown crispy skin. Once that happens, kind of rotate it around, turn it down to 325 and roast it until it's done. And the turkey's done when it's golden brown, it's delicious, the, the juices coming out are clear. And you're looking for the temperature of 150 in the breast and 165 in the thigh. Take the bird out and let it sit. Let it rest for at least 30, 45 minutes. You want the, it's such a big piece of meat that you want the bird to rest, the juices to relax and everything to be delicious. I like to take, when I carve the bird, I like to take the breasts off. I like to take the legs off and separate the drumstick and the thigh, slice those up. And then I, I make nice slices of the breast, put it on a plate. It's great to go. Put some sage thyme uh, as a garnish on there. And that's how I make my turkey. Now for me, stuffing is the most important meat part of the Thanksgiving meal and my family does two. So we do one, which is my Auntie Noreen's Nga Mai. It means uh, sticky rice. It's a Cantonese sticky rice stuffing. It's probably one of my top five favorite foods. It's so delicious. It's a mix, a mix of glutinous rice and jasmine rice that's cooked together. And then there's some ground pork, Chinese sausage, shiitake mushrooms, uh, green onion, cilantro, and it's seasoned with oyster sauce and soy, a little sugar, a little Chinese cooking wine. If that's all mixed together. It's, it's like, it's a perfect food. It's so delicious with some gravy on top. That is one of the stuffings. The other stuffing is a chanterelle and leek stuffing. I've kind of been on this stuffing for probably 10, 12 years, but 
I take some aromatics, I take leeks, I take onion, garlic, some shallots, some celery. I sweat those all together. Once those are nice and sweat together, I put some turkey stock in there. I season it with salt and some butter. I, I put in some chopped sage, some chopped thyme and chopped parsley. And then separately, I wash and cook some chanterelles and wedges and I have those ready to go. And then the third thing I have is a bunch of bread. I like to sometimes use sourdough bread. I remove all the crust. I cut them into large cubes and I let them dry out for a day or two. And I give them a little toast in the oven. And then I mix that very brothy aromatic mixture, mixture with the mushrooms and I mix that with the bread. And I put that into some baking dishes and I let those bake until they're nice, you know, and brown and crispy and delicious. And that is my chanterelle and leek stuffing. To go on those two things, I make gravy, a turkey gravy. It's pretty traditional, but I take my gravy really, really seriously. Um, I buy like eight to 10 pounds of turkey bones uh, just to make the gravy. So I'll roast those in a hot oven to get some nice color. And then I'll make a broth with the bones and I'll put them in a pot with um, onion and carrot and celery and some garlic and bring that to a boil, let that boil for a few hours. I strain that as my turkey broth and I'll use that in the stuffing as well. But then I'll take, uh, to, to make the turkey gravy, I make a brew out of the flour and butter or turkey drippings. I'll equal parts and I cook that in a pan so it cooks for a few minutes till the floury taste is out of there. And then I'll slowly kind of whisk in um, some of the turkey stock and keep whisking back and forth until it gets the right consistency. Um, I will cook the giblets and the heart on the side. I'll chop those up and put those in there and just make sure it tastes really rich and very turkey-y and really flavorful. And then to finish it, I'll put a drop or two of sherry vinegar or apple cider vinegar. And just like the little touch of vinegar at the end really just makes the gravy come alive, similar to like the acidity of the cranberry relish. It just comes alive and it is just so, so delicious. Uh, the vegetable sides at my Thanksgiving changes all the time. Um, I generally have been on this chicory salad with an anchovy dressing, some shaved fennel, and some caper breadcrumbs. That's been really delicious. Um, I've also done a lot of roasted veggies, roasted Brussels sprouts, and delicata squash, and curry squash, and honey nut squash, cauliflower. It's always nice to have a roasted veggie on the Thanksgiving meal. I've braised some shallots. Um, it's just a nice way to look at what, what vegetables are in season and prepare them in a very simple way that's also just really delicious and goes with the whole meal um, cohesively. Lastly, dessert. I am pretty traditional with my Thanksgiving dessert. I love pumpkin pie, I really do. Um, and I make my pie crust a few days in advance and we'll throw up the recipe for the pumpkin pie and the pie crust on there. But essentially, in a, to make the pie crust, you, in a bowl, you take the flour, the salt, and the sugar, you whisk that together, and you take the butter, and you work it in with your hands. And what you're doing is you're pressing the butter into the flour until it's like flat disks, kinds of. And so you're breaking it apart and you're constantly tossing it around. You want the butter chunks to be the size of large blueberries and you want the flour to kind of look like wet sand. Once it's at that point, you want to slowly drizzle in your water and you stir it with the back of a wooden spoon till it comes together. I take that mix, I cut it in half, and now you have two pie crusts and I store those in the fridge until it's ready. Um, and to make the pumpkin pie filling, I actually use basically the recipe on the back of a can of a Libby's pumpkin puree, like this one. I think it, their pumpkin is so flavorful. It has won so many awards in, in, in terms of like taste and texture, and it's just really delicious. Um, I basically follow their recipe. I cut back the sugar a little bit, um, and I add a lot more spices. I like to use fresh grated ginger in there, and I add a you know add some black pepper, a few more spices in there to make the pumpkin pie really just flavorful and you know, tasty and delicious. But I follow their pumpkin pie recipe with the pie crusts and it comes out really great. Of course, with whipped cream, as a kid, that was always my job. Like when I was really little, like a toddler preschool, we would whip the cream together, me and my cousin Noel, my sister Sharon, we would whip the cream. And that's kind of been a fun tradition to, to keep on with my little nephew who's turning four. So that is my Thanksgiving in a nutshell. 
in my general notes. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out on, on the YouTube page or on my Instagram. That's totally fine. Um, I hope you guys have a really great Thanksgiving. I hope you make this cranberry orange relish. It's so delicious and so tasty. And I don't want your Thanksgiving to be without it this year. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody.